What's up guys, Marshall Coding here. In this tutorial series, we're gonna build a Maven stack project and we will focus on user authentication mainly. We will implement JWT token authentication with HTTP only cookie approach. The technologies that we are using are MongoDB in terms of database, Node.js with Express.js framework for backend and Vue 3 for frontend application. Now let's get dive into the code. Now we will first separate our project into two sides, client side and server side. For that, let's first create two folders, client and server. So the client folder will contain the view app and the server will contain the Express.js app. Now let's go inside this server folder, inside in terminal. We will first install Nodeman for our Express app. So Nodeman is a package for Node.js to rerun the application when the files are saved. We will install Nodeman globally. Nodeman package is installed globally. Now let's create package.json file. So it will ask the package name. We can say, I will go by choosing the default values by pressing enter. Now the package.json file is created. Here we can see the name of our application and the dependencies we will download later. Now let's add node mount to this project as a dev dependency. So node mount is added. The reason why I added node mount as a dev dependency because it will not be used in a deployed application. It will be only used for development purposes. So the node one is installed. Now let's change the scripts. We can remove this test script. We need two scripts. The first one is start and the second one is dev. For start script, we will say node index because the name of our main application file will be index. For dev script, we will say nodeman index. Now let's create our index file. In the root of the project, we will create index.js and let's console log something. Now let's run our application. And we see the console output, which we specified inside the index.js file. Now let's add Express.js into our project. We will install Express.js by calling npm i express. Now Express.js is installed and let's configure it inside the index.js file. So first we need to call the express from node modules. Now this app constant will contain our express app and we will use app constant to further modify our application. Now we will specify the port that our application will run on. So the port number will be 2500. Now we will listen to that port and see that our application is running.
Let's run our application again. We see that we are listening to the port 3500. In this application, we will work with several NPM packages. Let's install those packages. So the first package we will use will be Bcrypt. Bcrypt is used for hashing the passwords. Cookie parser package is used for dealing. Course package will be used to set cross-origin resource sharing for our project. .env package will be used for dealing with environment variables. JSON web token package will be used to generate JSON token. JWT tokens. Mongoose package will be used to work with MongoDB. The packages are installed. Let's set up them in index file. First of all, we need to require .env package. In order to be able to use these packages inside our application, we need to define we need to define a few middleware.
Now we need to define a few configurations and we will call those configurations through the middleware. Now let's create a folder named config. First con configuration will be regarding the course. I created course.js file. Now we're done with the course. Let's also set up our database. I will create another config file named database.
I will import Mongo's library. Now we will define connect function. Now we will use our environmental variable database URI. In order to be able to use the environmental variable, we need to create .env file. And there we will create our environmental variable. Database URI will be our MongoDB database endpoint. We will create our database later. Let's continue with our configuration. In order to be able to work with cookies, we need to allow credentials from the client side. Now let's configure that too. I will create credentials file in config folder.
I made a small mistake and created credentials file inside config folder. It should be in middleware folder. Now let's create a middleware folder. And let's move credentials files inside middleware folder. We need to change the import according to that. Our last middleware will be the error handler for unhandled errors. Let's create a middleware. Now let's create our routes. We need to first create a route fol routes folder. Inside routes folder, I will create another folder named API. Inside API, I will create alpha.js. This file will contain all the routes regarding authentication and authorization. We're, we're back into index.js. Now I will call that route file. As you see, our authentication routes will start with slash API slash of. Now we will add our authentication routes.
As you see, we defined five routes for our authentication. Register route will be used for register. Login route will be used for login application. Logout will be used for logout. And refresh will be used for refresh tokens. And user route will be used for getting user data. I noticed that the method of this router should be get. Now we need controllers to accept the requests from the client, work with those requests and send response. Now let's create controllers. We need to first create a controllers folder. Inside that folder, I will create auth controller. Here, we will create controllers matching our routes. Now we will call these controllers inside our router file. Before moving into the database side, I would like to create a default handler with false routes. I mean the routes which are not defined inside our application. Now I am inside MongoDB Atlas website and I will create a database. And the collection name will be users. Okay. Now I will get my con database connection string and I will put it into our environmental variables. 
inside the overview part we have connect button I will choose connect your application and here's the connection string I will include this endpoint inside environmental variables database URI here instead of password section you have to assign your cluster password Before testing API, I would like to mention that you need to include your database name after slash field, after slash symbol in your database URI inside env variables. Inside index.js file, we have to move this app.listen into our database connection. This code will make sure that we will only open our application once the database connection is done. Inside network access page in MongoDB Atlas, make sure that your IP address is included in the whitelist, else your database connection will fail. Now let's test our database connection. Let's run our application. We see that error happen. Let's find the reason of the error. So the error is because of this .env import. Here we need to add parentheses after config. Now we see that the DB is connected and we are listening to the port. I would also like to test our controllers. Let's send status 200 in each controller and let's test it in the postman. Before continuing with our project, I would like to correct two possible mistakes. First of all is in allowed origins.js file, we need to export our origins. And inside error handler file, we need to replace rec that req with res, I mean response. Now we're good to go. Now we need to create a user model for our table users inside MongoDB database. We need to first create a models folder. Inside models folder, we will create user.js file. Inside that, inside that file, we will need to call mongoose library. And we will use schema. By using schema, we will create a user schema. Now we will define the fields that we want to use in our model. The first field will be username. The type of username will be string. And it will be required. The similar approach will be used for email field as well. I would like to add a few additional validators for email field. First of all, lowercase should be true. 
trim is also true. It will trim the email from black uh, spaces. And I will also like the email field to be unique. And I will define a validate object for regex validation. Now we will continue with creating a first name. I want the password field to be minimum 6 characters long. And the last field will be refresh token. I would also like to add a virtual. So virtuals is like, it's not a field inside a database, but we can build our virtual field by using the actual fields from the database model. Now here I created a full name virtual by using first name and last name and by concatenating them. Now let's export our model. Now we're done with the user model. We will use our user model inside controllers. Let's import that model. Before working with the controllers, we need to first import two libraries. As I mentioned before, we are using JSON Web Token and Bcrypt. Bcrypt will be used for hashing the passwords and JSON Web Token will be used to generate JWT tokens. So in each controller, we need to first check if the data is present. 
If yes, then we will continue working. If not, we will return a error response. So let's first get started with register controller. We will first get username, email, password. The validation of these fields will be done by Mongoose package. Actually, I could also create some validation logic in express side, but I would like to keep this simple. That's why I will just check if these values are present. If not present, I will send error response with 422 status. I will check if the user already exists in our database. If yes, I will return error response. If not, we will hash our password. So for hashing, we are using bcrypt library. The first parameter inside hash function is our password. The second parameter represents salt. But before checking password, but before hashing the password, I remember that we need to also check if the password and password confirm fields are same.
Now we can continue. I will create my user. After successfully creating a user, I will send a response with status 201, which represents created status. Now let's test our API. I just sent raw data to uh, our backend as a JSON. Now let's test it. It says passwords do not match. Let's check it. So here we made a mistake. We need to actually check if they are not equal to. Now let's test our API again. Yep, we see that our status is 201 and the data is created. Now let's check it in, the, the, uh, in our Mongo Atlas. Now let's finish up with our register controller. If error happens, we will return an error response. Now we'll continue with our login controller. Again, we have to check if the data is present, if present. But here we will only check if email and password, if I will copy and paste similar codes. First, I will get the user from database. If the user is not available, it's, uh, if the user is not existing in the database, then I will return error response with 401 status. And now we have to check if the passwords are matching.
If the passwords do not match, I will return error response. Now we will create access token and re refresh token. But before creating that, we need two secret tokens. Let's create those secret tokens. For this, we need node terminal. In the command line, I will write node. Here, we will use built-in crypto library to create a random hash. Now we got our secret token. In the env file, I will create access token secret. I will rerun the code. Now I will assign this second key to refresh token secret. We need th those two secret tokens to create access token and refresh token. Now the first parameter in JWT library is the use the claim token claim. So token claim indicates some information about the user. I would like to use username as a token claim. The second parameter will be the access token secret. And the third parameter will be additional information about the token. Here I will use expiration. So I set the expiration time for this token to 1800 seconds. So it means that after 30 minutes, the access token will expire and we will no longer be able to use this token. Now I will create refresh token. The procedure is similar to access token, but here I will use refresh token secret. And I will set the expiration date to one day, because usually the refresh token lifetime is much more lo much longer than access token lifetime
Now I will set the refresh token field of user to the new refresh token that we created. And we will save the user. Now refresh token will be saved in the database. After that, we will create a cookie named refresh token. And this cookie will be HTTP only cookie, meaning that it will not, it will not be accessed by JavaScript. It will only be available in cookie. And I'm setting the maximum age to one day. So it means that this refresh token cookie will expire after one day. And as a server response, we will return access token. Now let's test our code. In Postman, I created a new request and the request URL is the endpoint of our server then slash API slash off slash login. And the data we will send to the server will be email and password. Let's test it. It seems we have some errors. Let's check the console. So it says bcrypt.match doesn't exist. So probably the error is because of bcrypt library. I will replace bcrypt.match with bcrypt.compare. And this function, now we will test our API again. We see that we received our access token and if we go to the cookie we will see that our refresh token is set on the cookie and this is the value now we will work on logout functionality first we need to get our cookies So the cookies are accept, accessed by re, request.cookies and we will check if the cookie has a refresh token parameter. If there is no refresh token inside cookie, then we will return an error response. Sorry, instead of error response, we will send no content response. Now we will get our refresh token. And we will access the user from database by using that refresh token. We will check if the user exists in our database. If not, we will first clear the cookie. Again, we have to set the HTTP only to true. Now 
I set the same site parameter to none. Same site means that we will be able to use our cookies between cross-origin requests. It means that we will be able to use cookies both in client. We will be able to use cookies uh, between client and our server because they are placing in the separate origins. So when we use same site equal to none, we have to set secure to true. And I remember that I have to use this configuration in register, in login uh, API as well. Now let's continue with logout. After clearing the cookie, we will return a response. Again, it will be no content response. If the user exists in database, we will nullify the refresh token. And we will save the user. And one more thing. To get the user, we have to use we have to call this user that find one. And after find one, we have to also call exec method in async await requests. We have to use this exec in login route as well. And also in register controller. Now let's continue with logout. After saving the user, I will clear the cookie and send a response. I will use the same, same parameters. And we will send a no content response. Now let's test this API. I will create a new request for with logout endpoint. So the method will be post method. And it will be better that if we, we set the headers for application JSON, accept header to application JSON, also content type header to application JSON. Now we received status 204 no content and we see that the cookies are clear now let's log in again and log out we got new access token but we see that we didn't receive any cookies this is because we set the same site to none in the browser this will be used but for Postman API testing, we will remove this line from the code. We 
have to remove secure also. Now test the API again. Now we see that we both received access token and cookies. Now we will test the logout again. We see that no content and we see that our cookies has been removed. But remember that for our front-end application we will need same site and secure parameters for cookies. Now let's get started with refreshed endpoint. So this endpoint we will, will use our refresh token to create a new access token. If the access token expired, we will hit this endpoint and we will get a new access token. First we need to get our cookies. If no cookie, if refresh token doesn't exist in our cookie, we will send unauthenticated response. Now we will grab our refresh token. We will find the user by using a refresh token. If the user doesn't exist, we will return unauthorized error. Now we will verify our refresh token. Here we will check if the user is same as the decoded user we have in database. If the users are not same, we will return unauthorized response. If the decoded user is same as the user in database, we will continue creating a new access token.
Finally, we will return access token as a response. Now one more thing before testing the API. Here you see that we have username as a claim token and we will compare username with the decoded username. So the username is not unique in our database. It means that the, it can be duplicated. So we need a unique key to actually use it, use as a claim in the JWT token to securely compare with, uh, against other users. So instead of using username as a claim, I would like to use user ID as a claim because it's unique. But before using user ID as a claim, I would like to make a small modification to user model. So usually the user ID inside the database is stored as underscore ID. But underscore ID is not really friendly name. Now let's create a virtual named ID and set the value of ID as underscore ID. Now we will use this ID field to get user ID. Now let's change the username with user ID uh, in all sign functionalities in the controllers. First we will go to the login controller. And we will replace username with user ID, both for access token and refresh token. And for refresh controller as well. Now we will compare user IDs. And the claims will be ID. Now check if there is other place we need to use user ID. Now it seems fine. Okay, let's test the API again. So first I will log in again. I got new access token. I got new cookie. And I will test the refresh token endpoint. I will set the same headers. Now we got new access token. Let's compare these token to make sure that they are not same. Let's check the endings. We see that the endings are different. So it means that our endpoint works. So we got new access token. Now I would like to get the authenticated user and send its details as a response. But before working with the user controller, I would like to create a middleware which will set the authenticated user to a request as a parameter.
so that we can use that request user parameter in any controller. Now let's create a middleware for that. I will create a new file inside middleware folder. I will call this file authentication. We need to first import JSON Web Token Library. Then we will create authentication function. It will accept three parameters. Now I will check if the request has authorization header. If authorization header exists and if start, it starts with bearer token, we will continue our procedure. If authorization header doesn't exist or it doesn't start with bearer token, bearer, then we will just set the request user to empty object and we will return next now we will grab the token from header and now we will verify the JWT token If an error exists, we will repeat the same procedure. We will set request user to empty object and we will, we will return next. If there is no error, we will get the user by using token claim. So here we find the user by ID. We will use find by ID method of user model. We will include decoded ID and we will deselect password and refresh token because we don't want to return those values to client side those are confidential information if user exists we will assign request that user to user object to user user to object and we will set getters to true to also make full name and ID fields available because those are virtual fields. And if there is no user, we will just set the user, request user to empty object. And at the end, we will return next. Now let's test the API.
I will create a new endpoint and it will be a GET request. I will acquire a new access token. Now let's set the bearer header to access token. As usual, I will set the accept and content type to application JSON value. Now let's test the API. Yes, we see that we grab the user, which is authenticated. We have username, email, first name, last name, and we also have full name, which was actually a virtual field, and it was a concatenation of first name and last name. Now, this controller actually gets user data, so I would like to make it a conf I would like to make it confidential. I would like to make it available for only authenticated users. So I will create another middleware which will protect specific routes. So in our case, this user route will be a protected route. So it means that unauthenticated user will not be able to get user data. Now let's create a new middleware. I will name it auth. So basically, this middleware will check if we have user inside request or not. If user exists, we will return next. If the user doesn't exist, we will return error response. And the status will be 401. Now let's use this middleware for the routes. Now I'm in routes slash API slash auth.js file. We will first call our middleware. and we will call this middleware inside router. Now let's test the API. We see that we get the information. Now let's remove the bearer token from our headers, authorization header. Now we see that we got HTTP status 200 and we got an empty object. This means that our middleware doesn't work correctly. Let's fix, let's fix it. Now we see that we are checking if requested user exists and we will return next. Instead of this, let's check if the requested user has ID field. If ID field exists, it will return. Now let's test the API again. We see that right now we got 
401 unauthorized error. Let's test the API again with bearer token. I will grab the access token and I will put it here. And now we get the user. Just a small fix here. I will use return before next because without return it may cause some errors in the server. Now I would like to make a few fixes to the project. So in register controller we have this user.create. Actually we have to remove exec method from user.create because it will cause an error. And here if the user exists we're returning response.status but it should be actually response.send status. Now we are good to go. Let's test our API. I entered different user data and different email. Now we see that status 201 is received. Now let's check the database. I will refresh my database and I see that new user is created with the email that we entered. Now let's log in to that user account. We acquired access token. And we also have refresh token. Now let's test logout functionality. It also works correctly. We, we get the status 204 and we remove the cookie. Let's log in again. We got our access token. Let's test user data. Now we got the user data. And let's test refresh token. We got new access token, which is obviously different from the previous one. It seems we're done with the backend part and in the next video we will continue with view application.